Happy to be joined here at the Jewish Leadership Conference by Elliot Abrams, former Deputy National Security Advisor, and now with Tick for Fun. Thanks so much for joining us. This uh, conference, I know, means a lot to the Tick for Fun in particular. What What is the theme of this year's event? What are you hoping uh, to get out of this? Well, this is uh, not our first Jewish Leadership Conference. Uh, we just had a conference, huge conference in Israel on May 26th. Um, our focus, you know, is the Jewish people. Jewish people in the United States, the link between the Jewish people here and Israel. And we are fundamentally focused on education, that is, preparing the next generation of Jewish leadership. In terms of education, you know, there are a million different ways of looking at how Jewish people, especially young people, should be educated. What's, what's the Tikva Fund's approach and how is that evolving? First of all, it's getting larger <clears throat> and moving down the age scale. Tikva 10 years ago was educating college students. Now we're doing high school and middle school. And we're teaching Jewish history. We're teaching Zionism. Uh, we find that uh, not only kids who've gone through Hebrew school in their synagogue, but even day school kids frequently don't know all that much about Israel and the history of Zionism. So we've got uh, now readers focused on that. Uh, we've got um, lots of online classes, but I don't want to shirk uh, saying that we also do a lot, Tikva Online, uh, at the adult level. Uh, classes with Mayor Soloveitchik or Ruth Weiss. So I would say it's adult, it used to be adult down to college, and now it goes down to middle school. To kids really uh, not very long after bar mitzvah, because we think uh, they're now intellectually ready uh, to start learning more uh, and more deeply about Jewish history. I guess the education starts there, but when we talk about Jewish leadership, part of leadership is preparing the next generation of leaders. How, how, Absolutely. And what, we're, what, you know, we're, we're not going to be dealing with 20,000 people, 30,000 people. Uh, it's frankly a bit of an elitist concept. That is, we want to be talking to the next generation of Jewish leadership, which means we're looking for kids who are um, at the top of their classes. We're looking for kids who've shown an interest somehow in, in something they're already doing in their community, uh, in their synagogue, in their school, uh, because that's tomorrow's leadership in the community. And those are the young men and women that we want to focus on. I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to use that mind to ask about something else, and that's Iran, completely off topic, but got to ask you. The, the latest right now, it seems to be evolving by the day in terms of where the U.S. stands, in terms of where Israel stands right now. What is your view about where we go from here vis-a-vis -vis Iran? I don't think we're going to get back to the JCPOA. <clears throat> in my view, it was a very flawed agreement anyway, and it doesn't look as if the Iranians have much interest in going back. It looks as if they have a great interest in moving forward toward a nuclear weapon. I think we need to go back to the UN Security Council and we working with allies, France and England, that are permanent members, should now execute snapback, remember the famous snapback, and restore the heaviest possible sanctions on Iran. I think uh, that is the most effective thing we can do right now. Uh, I think we also need to maintain our support for the International Atomic Energy Agency. Iran may throw them out completely, they've started to. And at the end of the road, I think the president, President Biden, needs to keep his word. He said about a year ago, they're not gonna get a nuclear weapon on my watch. And that means that we in Israel need to think seriously about what a military option might be. Because I think what will really stop Iran is not the UN. What will really stop Iran is believing that there's a military deterrent and that the United States is willing to use it. The question becomes, uh, we heard um, Senator James Risch, the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, say in a meeting a couple weeks ago, <laughs> basically that it's, we know that Israel is going to take care of that. So is that really the scenario right now going through? It, it shouldn't be. Um, Iran getting a nuclear weapon is really um, a huge, <clears throat> unacceptable military challenge for Israel, obviously. Uh, but it is for us, too. You know, five presidents in a row have said, 
we will not permit this. If America is going to remain <clears throat> the leading power in the world, we need to maintain our credibility. And when you have five presidents in a row saying, we will not let this happen, we will not let this happen, <clears throat> we shouldn't let it happen. Elliot Abrams, former Deputy National Security Advisor, former Special Representative for Iran, now part of the leadership for the Tikva Fund. Thank you so much for joining us here on JNS. My pleasure. Thanks for being here.